Thank you for tuning in to Sunday Worship at Christ Church Cathedral in the Falkland Islands, once the hub of the Anglican Church throughout South America. We're delighted that you can join us as we continue to celebrate the Sundays after Trinity and the ongoing story of creation. We have a mix of familiar and not so familiar hymns in our service today, together with readings from the Bible and prayers for the day, and of course our Creation Watch special that features some of the wildlife in and around the Falkland Islands. And perhaps this should remind us not only that God is the creator, but as Charles Darwin pointed out, that we ourselves are animals, creatures within God's creation. Although it wasn't a particularly welcome revelation at the time, it should suggest to us now that we share the earth with the other creatures of creation and are responsible for its maintenance and care. We hope you enjoy the service and will want to join us again next week. What do we have in common with some of the great British cathedrals like Wells, Bury St Edmunds and Winchester? The answer may sound a bit prosaic, but our collection of hand-embroidered needlers are just as impressive as theirs, and like buried treasure, very much worth discovering. So don't leave your visit too long. Today we're taking a closer look at a group of seven needlers that were dedicated in a special ceremony at Evenstong on Sunday the 25th of June 1995. All the work of the Cathedral Needlers Group formed two years earlier. They range in subject from the wreck of the Lady Elizabeth, a biblical fishing scene and the Girl Guide Association logo, to Upland Geese. The aim of the Neelers Group was to promote the natural, historical, cultural and religious heritage of the islands, and one measure of its success is the large number of tourists who make sure that they come away with photographs each and every year. Round the side of every Neeler there runs a border of Canterbury Crosses, reminding us of the historic link between the old world and the new. Valerie Tatham, one of the organisers of the project, together with Jean Diggle and Jenny Cox, tells me that the group had regular meetings to exchange ideas, discuss designs, distribute wool and canvas, and generally to encourage one another, although most of the actual stitching was done in people's homes. Many individuals, both men and women, were involved in this remarkable project, which continues to fire the imagination even now. Each Neela has its own personal story. The Alistair Cameron Memorial Trust logo represents a tragic accident when Suki and Jane Cameron's brother Alistair was killed on the MPA road. Not surprisingly, it was sponsored by Suki in his memory and the Neela shows an enduring island image, the first crest and public seal of the colony in use from 1840 to 1925. Charted by Tim Simpson, the stitching was completed by Marge McPhee. But undoubtedly the iconic picture in this group is that of the three-masted bark, the Lady Elizabeth, launched at Sunderland in 1879 for John Wilson. Only five years later Wilson became bankrupt and the ship was bought by the Carron family of Castletown in the Isle of Man and they operated her for some 20 years. In 1906, the Lady Elizabeth was sold to a Norwegian company and was finally condemned in Stanley seven years later after having been holed on the Urany rock at the entrance to Barclay Sound after a difficult passage round the Horn. After being used as a storage hulk for many years, she broke loose from her moorings and beached herself at Whalebone Cove in 1936. The Neela was designed by Nicky Buxton from a photo by John Adams and the stitching was done by Manny Curd. Turning to the natural environment, the salt-tolerant scurvy grass is endemic in the Falklands where it was used as elsewhere by sailors to ward off scurvy as the leaves are rich in vitamin C. The Neela was designed and stitched by Julia Hopkins who dedicated the finished result to her uncle. The dice and seamless robe 
pictured on the kneeler stitched by Valerie Ellis, is a reference to the Gospel of John's account of the crucifixion of Jesus. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and divided them into four parts, to every soldier a part, and the coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven whole from the top down. Therefore they said among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it will become. Thus the saying in Scripture was fulfilled, They divided my raiment among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. This is the second of the kneelers to depict the symbols of the Passion, and like several others, it was charted by Tim Simpson. Next on the list is the upland geese on Cape Pembroke, stitched by Edwina Bingham. There was a very personal reason for Edwina choosing the upland geese, as her husband Mike was the then conservation officer, and had previously helped save the Hawaiian local goose, the Neen, from extinction. Another design with a local story to tell is the Neela showing the symbols of the Girl Guides Association, Brown Owl, the Rainbow, a tent, a campfire, and the Girl Guide logo. This was designed by Jenny Cox and stitched by Janice Black, a founder member of the Friends of Guiding in the Falkland Islands. And the final Neela in this group is the biblical fishing scene designed and stitched by Alison Barton. The Neela shows the disciples struggling with an unexpectedly large catch of fish after Jesus had urged them to let down their nets for a second time, after catching nothing during a whole night. At the time, Alison's husband John was director of fisheries, so the subject was in a sense heaven sent. All these kneelers represent a huge amount of work and commitment, and it is right that they have come to be regarded not just as something unique to the cathedral, but part of the island's wider heritage. Do come and see for yourself. This morning service opens with a hymn written by one of the heavyweights of the 19th century Church of England. John Keeble, academic and poet, author of numerous books, not only wrote hymns, but as a clergyman also sought more effective methods of outreach. Eventually, this led to the start of the Oxford movement, changes in liturgy and the way that services were presented, something that affected the Falklands as much as anywhere else. Son of My Soul, a prayer for God to be with us and give us his blessing, is based primarily on the Psalms and the Gospels of Luke and John. Be near to bless me when I wake, ere through the world our way I take. The words are on the screen, so if you would like to join us in singing this classic hymn of praise at home, please do so. Today the voice divine Now 
Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your own image. Now, through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Sir James Bowring, gifted linguist, poet, and the author of our next hymn, was born at Exeter in 1792. He was elected to Parliament in 1835, subsequently becoming British Consul at Canton and later Governor of Hong Kong. The hymn was probably inspired by Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, verse 14. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. The hymn expands on this thought, speaking of how the cross can bring peace and joy, regardless of our own circumstances. If you would like to join with us in this classic at home, the words are on the screen now. Oh, 
readings begin this morning with the refreshingly simple Psalm 19, read for us by Denise Blake. Doing what is right will keep us blameless. And this is spelt out in no uncertain terms by Nancy Locke when she reads about Moses delivering the Ten Commandments to the Israelites in the book of Exodus. As the psalm puts it, may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. After a break for Creation Watch, we move on to the parable of the vineyard, read by Steve Pointing. This gives us an idea of what can happen when things go really wrong. Even then, however, we are not without hope, as we shall hear. Psalm number 19. The law of the Lord is perfect. Verses 7 to the end. The law of the Lord is perfect. Reviving the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock, my rock and my redeemer. Exodus 20, reading from verse 1. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water beneath the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work. Honour your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you, so that you do not sin. We take a moment now to reflect on our place in creation as we watch a short video of the amazing wildlife around us in these islands. We're truly blessed in the unspoilt nature of our environment. And thanks to Falkland's conservation, we have a window onto this unique world. But don't just enjoy the pictures. Wherever you are during this season of creation tide, you can do your bit to help maintain and preserve the vibrant habitat that God has made.
The Gospel is taken from Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 to the end. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is his heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever had a big disappointment in life? Like failing an exam or not winning that job you so badly wanted? Not being promoted or perhaps worse, being made redundant or maybe furloughed during the COVID-19 pandemic? Maybe you've had bad, bad luck in love, made a bad decision on investments or even had a major holiday disaster. As we grow older, most of, it, most of us experience failure in one form or another. It almost seems what we might think of as normal. So we can probably appreciate the disappointment of the vineyard owner in this morning's Gospel reading. After all, the owner of the vineyard had done everything according to plan. He would planted good vines. He protected them with a wall and dug a wine press. It should have produced a really successful business. Unfortunately, as it turned out, he had selected the wrong tenants. Not only did they refuse to pay their rent, but they killed the servants sent to collect it, followed later by the owner's only son. On a scale of 10, this probably rated the top score of 10 itself. The owner would be bound to be upset, disappointed, bitter and intent on revenge, if nothing else, for the death of his son. And who could blame him? Even the Pharisees have to admit that he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. The irony is that this is an allegory about God, Jesus, the Jews and the religious authorities. And maybe it could all apply to us as well. In the end, when Jesus had been rejected and put to death, the vineyard, that is God's world, is rented out to the rest of us. Jesus reminds his hearers of the words of Psalm 118. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvellous in our eyes. Jesus reinforces his point by speaking directly to the Jews and the religious leaders. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you 
and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The problem in the parable lies with the failure of the Jews and their religious leaders to see Jesus for who he is. And the harsh truth is that they were a big disappointment. How can we be sure that in our turn we won't be an equally big disappointment? The message in all the readings is consistent, that we have not yet got it right, that we do not yet properly understand the values of God, either because we have a warped idea of what God wants, or because our focus is more on our own needs and desires rather than those around us. If we truly loved our neighbour as much as Jesus wants us to, then we would be able to ensure justice and mercy for all, irrespective of race, religion, colour or lifestyle. But there are also those meaningful words of Moses, do not be afraid. Restoration is possible even though the tenants have broken the rules. We hear a lot about restorative justice these days. If we ask God for help, we can rest assured that God remains faithful. It can all be put right. But we can't put it right on our own. The readings from Exodus and Matthew, however, remind us of the two covenants that God has made with us. First of all, that awesome covenant made with Moses on Mount Sinai, which resulted in the rules set out in the Ten Commandments. And secondly, the New Testament covenant made through the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross, exemplified in the parable, of course, by the death of the son of the owner of the vineyard. We all need rules whether we are playing Monopoly, football, golf, or taking an exam. And the Ten Commandments still represent principles for right living that are bound up in the sacred and holy presence of God. Refined by Jesus, they underpin the laws of most Western nations. So what happens when something as in the vineyard goes wrong? I was brought up on the principle of, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I didn't realise it at the time, but that seems to be the way that God works, at least in the sense that he doesn't give up on us. To avoid disappointment, neither should we give up on him. We affirm the faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people throughout the world, for all Christian leaders, especially for our Archbishop Justin and Bishop Tim, and for those who teach and guard the faith. We pray for your church here in the Falkland Islands, for those who gather for worship in our churches today, for those who join our worship online, and for those who are unable to come to church. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them, for Elizabeth, our Queen, for His Excellency the Governor, for members of Legislative Assembly, and for all who make decisions which affect the welfare of the nation. Give them the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, for those who live and work here, and for those who visit this place. Speak your word of peace in our midst, and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those bowed down with grief, fear or sickness, for those who mourn the death of loved ones, for those receiving or awaiting medical treatment, for those living with depression or fear. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ, and we rejoice with all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word fulfilled. Merciful Father, accept our prayer for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The collect for today, the 17th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself and so bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn today is a real expression of joy from an unlikely source. William Chatterton Dix, well known as a prolific writer of hymns and Christmas and Easter carols, was born in Bristol but ended up working in Glasgow as manager of a marine insurance company. However, his heart lay in the poetry of worship and hymns like As With Gladness Men of Old and Hallelujah Sing to Jesus seemed to trip off his pen without a great deal of effort. Dix had a twin passion for literature and high church Anglicanism. Together, these helped create some of the most memorable 19th century hymns, and he was widely acclaimed at the time as a poet of the church. The words are on the screen now, so please do join in at home if you would like to. Throne. 
Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. 